These holes here, guys, these belong to a racehorse goanna. So that's where they hide and wait for their prey. Just here fellas, it's a beautiful silver gum eucalyptus tree and it's got four beautiful trunks and during sunset guys when the sun goes down just on the verge of sunset these absolutely look beautiful like silver. Can't really see it too well, guys, but this little spider here is called a Christmas spider. And just here, fellas, is another species of spider. It wouldn't be poisonous, guys. So if you're walking in the Australian bush, a lot of the spiders around here, um, like spin webs like this from one tree to another, aren't poisonous. So if you ever walk through the cobwebs, don't stress. I'll take a photo of this beautiful Christmas spider, guys. When you're walking in this type of bush, guys, especially when there's a lot of, um, uh, what are they, casuarina trees, it's full of all of these Christmas spiders, guys. I'm actually literally covered in webs. It can be a real pain, but usually when I walk through them, you get them in your mouth and everything. So like this one here, there's a little one right there. So usually if, if I'm walking through here, instead of, because sometimes you literally can't walk through the bush without going cobwebs so you just got to use your hand so what do I do instead of I just break the side of the web like down here down the on the left or the right hand side so go like this and just walk through walk through it's a pain but you can't do much about it like I say I've got spiders webs on me I've got look at this there's one there on me so I usually go home I've got them all on my legs here so these are Christmas spiders, guys. You're not taking them. Harmless, guys, but they are a pain. Especially when you get covered in cobwebs. So I don't know. It's all in my head. It's cobwebs hanging off my face. Here. So you just walk through it and bear with it. It's hard not to. It's hard not to walk through them guys, and like I say, if you do walk through these spider webs, don't, don't panic if you're not familiar with the bush. The spider webs, like I say, if they go from one tree to the other, they're more or less uh, harmless spiders. Just see here guys, there's two dead flies stuck in there. There's a Christmas spider right there, there it goes. I tried to take a photo of a really nice bug before guys stuck in there but it didn't I don't think it worked out.
And just finally guys before I sign off, if you do walk through these spiders webs, especially when you feel them on your face, all you got to do is just walk slowly backwards and then try and find another path. That's what I usually do, but sometimes when there's so many, if I just keep on walking, except for sometimes it goes in my face, it's a horrible feeling to have cobwebs stuck on your face, knowing that there's probably a spider somewhere sitting on your face. things here guys these are from when probably tree branches when the tree was you know sprouting and tree branches have been broken off so they're like wounds that's a beautiful one there's two there it's a piece of bark guys what do you reckon peel it off that spiders with my fingers and these trees here well, fellas, when um, obviously you can see all the bark is peeling off, and you can see down the bottom here there's a big pile of bark that always happens with the eucalyptus trees. Usually, or not all the time, but I've come across echidnas actually living amongst all this bark. So you just got to be careful where you step when you're walking in the bush. You don't want to step on a, an echidna. Not that you would hurt it because they're pretty strong, and you know they've got those. I'll call it. They'll curl up into a big ball so the chance of hurting it is very remote you probably got more chance of hurting yourself by stepping on one of the thorns and just see all this beautiful bark it's a nice tip guys if you are walking in the Aussie bush um, you come across nice wildflowers and uh, unusual uh, shrubbery like this beautiful native West Australian um, bush I don't know what it's called but use the best thing to if you want to know what they smell like be not the best with um, or you can do it with wildflowers but don't ever do it with orchids because some orchids are very very rare and endangered but if you ever want to find out what they smell like just rub it between your fingers like that or rub between your two your palms by rubbing your hands together and you smell it mm, beautiful it's a beautiful smell and that's how you find out what they smell like and this one smells absolutely beautiful it's like a lemon smell a nice lemon fragrance You do take photos guys, always take photos when the sun's shining. So it wasn't be just when I showed you that beautiful uh, lemon fragrance flower then the sun wasn't out. So I wasn't going to take a photo but I will in a minute. But look at this beautiful colour and the beautiful patterns here. So that would take, well I've just done a beautiful photo but this is the type of stuff you look for when you want to take nice photography of trees or flowers. And just anyway guys, there's another thing right here. Look at these little scratch marks here, all the way up this tree here. So those scratch marks would be um, from a native marsupial. Possibly a possum, a wily, I think they are. And there's another one I can't think of. But yeah, definitely track marks, claw marks, where they run up and down this tree.
And these hollow trees, guys, are the type of trees what um, snakes live in, foxes, uh, echidnas, uh, goannas, uh, heaps of other types of animals. So if you ever see them, if you've got a torch, shine a torch up there and you never know what you see. Before I go, fellas, see all these beautiful old broken antique bottles. Really old, too, these ones are. You ever come across stuff like this? You've got a rake, break it, and you never know what you might find. You might find a nice intake bottle. Tin guys, we just saw it that old dump. I'm going to take this one home. I like finding old tins like this, and I just put them in my garden for little animals to live in, or reptiles, or a bit of um, Australiana decoration, a bit of rustic um, decoration in the garden, and you just kind of forget about it. And one day you stumble back across it and find out what might be living in there, or it's just, it just looks nice. G'day guys, any of you guys or girls know what this is? This is actually a trapdoor spider's lid from a hole. Already touched it guys, there's no hole there, it's probably just blowing away from the wind. So that there is from a trapdoor spider's hole. We'll see, see if we can find a trapdoor spider's hole intact. So it's just made out of spider web, dirt. And it's camouflage, obviously. So, and look at this, guys. It's quite amazing. This is a, another insect cocoon. It's actually a leaf, and somehow the insect has turned that into like a little tiny pyramid. And inside there is a cocoon of some kind of an insect. You take a photo of it. There's a better view of it, guys. Just see a little tiny silvery track there. So it could be some type of snail. I don't think so. But yeah, very unusual. Just see you fellas with that. All these ants with their little baby eggs on the same tree as that cocoon. So it just goes to show guys, whenever you're walking, just take your time, stop, look at a tree, and you'll see some amazing stuff. So this tree branch right here is literally covered in ant cocoons and eggs. Well guys, I just found this amazing old dump and I kicked the dirt looking for bottles my feet and look at this, I didn't even realise it was a bull ant's nest. Guys, this is a different species of ant what I was looking for. You can just see all those eggs. All the ants taking the eggs back, so I won't actually use this bull ant's nest, guys. This is a different species there. The one I'm after is a really ferocious type of bull ant, but anyway, we'll cover those eggs back up
that goes. And they can sort it out themselves. I didn't realise there's a bull ant's nest. See, it is a species of really tiny ants what live in this crack. And these things here, guys, these are actually um, called a uh, lion ant. A little lion ant lives in there. And what happens is insects fall in those little holes there and they can't get out. It's like a sand trap. And so, yeah, they're pretty voracious. So I've done videos on these ones before too. Just about to head off to another location, and I just found the spider ants. I mean, I just found the ants I'm after, and I can see them already. These ones are really, really vicious, guys. I forget their name. I'm not good with remembering names of um, a lot of species, guys, but I would love to learn to know all the names of all the native wildflowers around here. One day I will. Stick this in here, make it organised. I'll tap it and I'll come. This one here. comes one 